I have a confession to make. I've never used flexible filaments before. I know, you're scandalized. I am too. Truth is though, I've always been a bit afraid to try it. Something about it just has always made me hesitate and retreat to safer pastures, but not today. Today, we dive into the springy world of TPU. I figured, what better way to give flexible filament a try than with some cosplay accessories? You may recall that I'm working on a Clara cosplay from Pokemon Sword, and Shino X has designed this great printable model of Clara's bracelet. Since I've got no prior experience to fall back on, I'm going to use this opportunity to get to know two rather different kinds of TPU. Ninja Tech Ninja Flex and ColorFab Vario Shore TPU. Based on what I've seen from others, they produce very different results, but seeing what others have done is no substitute for doing it oneself. I'm going to start with the Ninja Flex, but since I have genuinely never used this stuff before, I think a test Benchy is in order. I'll be starting with MRE's Ninja Flex profile for Prusa Slicer as my baseline, and I'll tweak it from there. Well, what are we all standing around for? Let's get the filament in and get printing. Okay, so wow, <laughs> that was an adventure right out of the gate. I knew that printing in Ninja Flex was going to be a bold move, especially as my first ever flexible print. However, I did not quite expect this kind of result. Now, mind you, this is Ninja Flex Benchy version one after a serious haircut. This is actually how it looked coming off the print bed. I know, you're probably wondering what all went wrong here. Uh, don't worry, I'm not too proud to tell you. It was my own hubris, thinking I could time-lapse a flexible filament the same way I do PLA or PETG. Yeah, I probably should have thought of this ahead of time. I didn't change a single setting for this. If you're curious about how I do my time-lapses, I've actually got a whole video about it that you can watch here. Now, I needed to make sure that this was in fact a problem with doing time lapses of Ninja Flex and not an actual problem with printing Ninja Flex. Easy question to answer though, just print one without a time lapse. This is a bit more like it, I think. Incredibly, MRA's Ninja Flex profile really was a great place to start from, as you can see from the quality of this print. I was amazed at how much retraction I was able to get away with on my Prusa, a whopping 5.5 millimeters. Given how everyone is usually telling you to use little to no retraction for flexibles, this surprised me greatly. A forever perfectionist, I of course wasn't entirely happy with these results and felt the need to tweak things a bit more, which also eventually escalated into trying to figure out the time-lapse settings. That turned out to be a bit of an adventure as well. I wish I could report back that I found the perfect settings for a flexible filament time-lapse, but I'm afraid I finally called it quits after a solid 12 hours of trying. I'll come back to this problem another time. In the meantime, I've got some Ninja Flex settings I'm happy with. That means it's time to print what we came here to print, Clara's bracelet. Let me get on that. Well, would you look at that? It definitely seems like the profile tweaking I did paid off. Look at that surface finish. Look at those edges. Even the underhangs are pretty decent. I really am impressed with both the filament and my good boy Prusa Mark 3S. That said, it did come at a small price. Time. This relatively small print, printed with 0.1 millimeter layers, took a whopping 10 or so hours to print thanks to needing to print ultra snail pace with Ninja Flex. The whole thing felt dreadfully slow. That said, it isn't just worth it with flexible filament, it's essential. Printing any faster definitely results in catastrophic failures. Not that I had any of those, but I did have a couple of false starts. 
Turns out support's not great in NinjaFlex. Of course, it was impossible to completely avoid any stringing, and I still ended out with some in spite of high retraction settings, thanks to the design of the model. They weren't too big of a deal to remove, thankfully. Everything seemed to be coming up pretty millhouse. That is, until I realized I'd made a fatal flaw. I, uh, didn't scale the bracelet correctly. I didn't forget to measure myself, I swear. I absolutely did measure my wrist. I just didn't do a very good job of it. That's okay though, because we aren't done here. Before I bother reprinting the bracelet in the correct size in NinjaFlex, it's time to move on to the competition filament, Color Fab's VarioShore TPU. Now, the VarioShore TPU is very different from the NinjaFlex, mostly due to the fact that, depending on the temperature, the VarioShore TPU foams up to almost twice its size. It's actually an incredibly fascinating material, and Stefan over at CNC Kitchen has already made a very informative video all about the stuff over on his channel, which you should totally watch if you want to learn more about this stuff. Based on his calculations, I decided that I would print the Clara bracelet at 220 degrees Celsius to achieve maximum foaming, which also meant that I could turn the extrusion multiplier way down to get extrusions of the same width. Cool, right? As you may recall though, I've never used this stuff before either, so uh, I should probably go figure that out now. Hey, I, give me a moment, okay? Okay, that's a bit better. I think I've got the very short figured out now. And for the most part, my response is just wow. <laughs> Seriously though, I knew the VarioShore in its fully foamed glory was going to be cool, but I did not expect the results I did get. This soft, flexible print feels like foam, deforms a bit like foam, and if I didn't know better, I probably would have thought just was foam. Except it was 3D printed. I know, because I watched it happen. Unsurprisingly, some stringing and blobbing was unavoidable with this filament due to being both flexible and foaming. I tried many, many different variations of retraction settings, only to eventually accept that there was no way around it. That aside though, the print quality is exquisite. Due to the foaming nature of this filament, the layer lines are almost completely filled in. This print was actually done at 0.2 millimeter layers instead of the 0.1 millimeter I did with the NinjaFlex, and the layers are even less noticeable in this one. Incredible. Obviously, the prints did not come off completely flawless as overhang still struggled from the usual issues, and I got a bit of a weird line where it looks like the filament didn't foam quite as much, but honestly, the results are still quite impressive. Since, of course, my uh, sizing issues were not entirely behind me, I thought I'd give it one more go and see if I could attain perfection. I could not. But this gave me a great opportunity to see how the VarioShore TPU reacted to post-processing. Hand sanding didn't give great results, but my power tools worked fantastically. I found I was easily able to smooth and shape the foam TPU with my Dremel, much the way you would with AvaFoam. It made quick work of the cleanup as well as fixing up any flaws from printing. All told, the results are pretty remarkable. So, what do I think about these two different flexible filaments now that I've gotten to know them both a bit? Honestly, I think that NinjaFlex is remarkable stuff, and once you get familiar with its material properties, it's pretty awesome to print with. Its layer adhesion and flexibility are incredible, and I can think of uh, a few uses for this stuff. That said, for this specific use, I think that the VarioShort is definitely the clear winner, with it effectively being 3D printable Ava foam. The finish is fantastic, the piece is almost as light as air, and it was not difficult to print with whatsoever. As long as you're prepared to clean up some oozy spots, you can create some amazing things with it. This is definitely the one I'll be adding to my Clara costume. Cool. What sorts of things have you made with flexible 3D printing materials? 
Have you stumbled upon any incredible discoveries about a particular type like I have with the Vario Shore TPU? I definitely want to hear about it if you have. I am loving learning about this exciting new avenue of 3D printing. And if you haven't tried Flexibles before, has this video perhaps inspired you to give it a go? Leave me a comment and share your story below. Stick around if you want to see more of this costume getting built, as I have the wig and the bow still to create, both of which will have new techniques and materials, as well as an awesome bonus Pokemon prop that may involve both 3D printing and electronics. When I'm not posting YouTube videos, I'm sharing work in progress shots on social media, as well as behind the scene looks on Patreon. So make sure you're subscribed and following and involved everywhere so you don't miss a thing. I am loving getting to try and learn new things in my artsy making adventure, and I hope you are too. Until next time though, keep creating.